大家好，我是 Stand Up Prep Education Janet， 在加州硅谷。今天和合作伙伴原西北大学招生官 Stephanie 共同举办一场讲座。这场讲座一共四十分钟，将深度回答高中规划大学申请中的。家长的问题 ，Stephanie 在西北大学做招生官的时候，审阅了几千份学生的申请表。今天也会坦诚和我们分享很多内部的信息。Janet has asked me to talk about the number of admissions officers who read an application, and that actually changes or will change depending on which school you're applying to. So you'd have as few as one, as many as three to four reading an application. But the other thing to note is is that the way admissions officers are reading applications has changed. The University of Pennsylvania in Philadelphia has started a program that's spreading to universities all over the country, and it's called committee-based evaluation. And committee-based evaluation is a process by which two admissions officers read an application at the same time, and they read it, and they one reads the transcript and the Testing and the other focuses on the recommendations and the essays. And by reading it together, they get a sense of how the transcript and the testing interact with the students' essays. They typically take about four minutes to read an application. Other schools have a group of readers who are not on the admissions committee who will. Sieve or view or perhaps stop applications they feel are not worthy to make it to the admissions committee, and so their readers, not admissions officers, and then the admissions officers read the applications the readers have permitted to reach. The admissions officer. Finally, I'll say that when I was reading files, there were three to four readers reading each file, and it was very difficult not to look at what the prior reader had said about an applicant before you made your decision. I think. A holistic review is is kind of a funny term. Basically, it means that. They will look at every single part of the application, not just the grades and the scores. But it makes sense that you know it, it's kind of the way that you would review an application, not putting the grades and scores above, say, the essays or the recommendations, but looking at the big picture all together. That said. Universities do care about grades and scores and testing before they care about the essays. If you look at when admissions officers are surveyed, and they're surveyed every year by the National Association of College Admissions Counseling, grades in college prep courses, grades in overall courses, it, test prep, those are the top, and the strength of the curriculum are the most important things. Actually, uh, Janet has just put up a slide so that you can review. What admissions officers consider the most important aspects of the application? 大学综合评估学生，一句简单的话说，是从学术和非学术两个方面来评估。学术呢，指的是学生的高中成绩啊，各项标化成绩，比如说 SAT 或 ACT 啊、AP 啊、SAT 课程啊。那么非学术方面呢，指的比如说课外活动啊、大学申请表的方方面面呢、啊、老师推荐信呢、啊、等等。以上这个表格是统计了很多美国大学。学呃得出的统计，看看美国大学对哪些因素最看重。申请大学是一项双向选择，学生们都想进呃最可能的优秀学校。那么我们要看看，那美国大学最看重什么？知己知彼，百战不殆。This is one of the most important questions you can feasibly ask. The reason why this is such an important question is because colleges have financial priorities. They have goals with respect to rankings. They have new campuses or new majors that they want to fill. They also love to make diversity statements about they have students from 32 countries or from 50 states or those kinds of things. But the most important thing for colleges and universities is whether or not a 
students will graduate and they do not want to have a hole in their freshman class because a student didn't do well academically. So that is why grades in college prep courses, grades in all courses and testing are the most important aspects of the survey that Janet posted above. The transcripts and the testing, I think, are the hardest part and in some respects, the easiest part of the application. If you have great testing and a great transcript, you're like every other student pretty much who applies to any of the schools in the Ivy League. So you really have to differentiate yourself beyond that. They expect to see a lot of advanced classes. They expect to see that you took the core curriculum for four years. So those are just meeting expectations, strong testing and strong transcript. You really have to go beyond the transcript in order to be impressive to those types of schools. And that's really where extracurricular activities come in. They expect you to have strong extracurricular curricular activities because they want to make sure that when you get on to Harvard's campus, not only are you learning from other students, but you're also teaching other students about the things that you've encountered and the activities that you are involved in. Anyone who goes to Harvard and spends 24 seven in the library isn't really the person that Harvard was hoping to admit. 成绩单呢，可以告诉大学很多关于学生的方方面面，比如说这个高中的成绩是上升曲线呢，还是下滑曲线呢？学生有没有通过课程来充分的挑战自己啊？而学生两个学生都是四点零，其实这两个学生的四
what schools want to be known for. They want to be known for interesting activities on their campuses. And that's why extracurriculars are so important. The other reason why they're important is because when you're interacting with your fellow students, you're teaching them and they're teaching you. And studies show that 70% of what you learn on a college campus is outside of the classroom, even 70 to 80%. So that's why extracurricular activities are so important. And that's why just having strong test scores and strong transcript is not enough to get into the top schools anymore. 仅有优秀的 GPA 和标化成绩不足以让学生进入美国顶级的大学，因为美国顶级的大学非常注重学生的课外活动。最基本的一点是，仅靠学生的成绩无法体现学生的特点和特长。大学呢，他们是希望学生能够积极参加，并且带动大学的校园生活。美国的顶级大学都认为呢，百分之三十的学习在课堂上，百分之。Yes, and that's one of the things that standout prep education does. They employ former admissions officers to look at a prospective student's activities in advance to ask questions about what the student is really doing and to make sure that the activities are robust, show leadership, and really are described well. So whoever's reading the application understands that the student was involved in his or her. High school, so absolutely, and I think that's actually one a very good service. 从今年开始，我们提供一项单项服务，也就是针对九年级、十年级、十一年级的学生，提前让美国排名前十或者是前十五大学的原招生官啊、呃，评估学生的课外活动，看一下这些课外活动是否和未来的目标大学相吻合，如何进行提前的规划。比如说，如果、呃、大学招生官说，哎，学生的这个活动在未来的两两年或一年需要深化，或者这个活动看起来太分散，需要剪除。这样提前的评估学生的课外活动，对未来学生的一年的或两年的规划非常重要。I would also say one last thing, and that is, is that the extracurricular profile really needs to start. Early, so from freshman year, it's what admissions officers want to see is that the students participated in activities nine, ten, eleven, twelve, not just ten, eleven, twelve, or eleven, twelve, because that's often what you start to see when students begin to think about colleges. They then add on. Six or seven activities in junior year to senior year, and that's really transparent. Admissions officers can really see through that. You really want to start the activities early and create a really robust list of extracurricular activities that highlight the student's leadership and ability to manage other students, as well as to be an interesting part of the community. This single service is a collaboration between the U.S. Admissions Office and our United States Admissions Office. Unfortunately, there's not. A specific number of AP courses that a student needs to take. It's that the student does well in the courses that he or she is taking. I think 10 AP courses is quite a lot of AP courses, and so no one can say that that student hasn't really pushed himself and really worked really hard with respect to the curriculum. If a student receives Bs in an honors course early on. What he or she could do is to balance out the Bs with perhaps the SAT two in that subject, if there is one, or even take the AP course in that subject, even if the student hasn't taken an AP. A B will not keep a student out of the Ivy League. That's for sure. So I have seen students who were admitted who had a B or more, B, like two Bs on their transcripts. But what else did they have to offer? So you always have to think about what are the other things that the student has to offer in addition to just the transcript. So the extracurriculars must be phenomenal. A lot of leadership. Testing must be strong. And then. There are ways to communicate to the admissions committee if a student, for example, has a very difficult teacher in AP U.S. history, for example, he or she can take the SAT two or the and the AP exam in AP U.S. history and do very well in those exams, and that's a way to communicate to the admissions committee that perhaps the teacher was difficult, but the student understood all the information.
大学是根据不同的高中来评估学生，所以要在他所。能够拥有的资源情况下，看他如何挑战自己，所以没有固定的 AP 课程的门数。我同意啊 ，Stephanie 的说法，我也同意 Stephanie 的说法。如果一个同学 Honor 课程得了 B， 可以用 AP 课程来弥补，或者是 SAT 啊 Two 课程考试来弥补。I would say four years, but I'm looking at the most Difficult schools to get admitted to. I think that if you're applying to schools that are easier to get admitted to, they still would love to see four years. So two years is a little light. I would prefer to see four. And one of the ways that I have done that assessment is is that I look at the most competitive schools and what. Their requirements are with respect to the years of foreign language, and that's where I come up with that number. 高中需要修几年的外语，这需要根据学生的未来目标大学来考虑。如果目标是藤校一类的大学，一般是四年修同一门外语。I'd have to have more detail about a science student who's taken a lot of social sciences courses to really be able to answer that question in the best possible way. But what I th- I think that the question has at its core is what about a student who can do both quantitative courses as well as writing courses, and that's exactly what schools want to see. They want to see that a student has strength in not only math and science, but in foreign language or English and history, and that. He or she can move between both of those curriculums very well. That I think is certainly a coveted student for sure. 如果未来想修科学专业的同学，在修了很多门科学课的前提下，又修了很多门社会科学的 AP 课程，我认为这样的学生是非常多姿多彩的。大学会非常期待这样的学生。生物课和化学课是两门基础的科学课程，无论学生未来是学文科呀还是理科呀，这都属于基本科学。These requirements differ, and they differ based on a few things. First, how rigorous is the school that the student Is com- applying to. So, how competitive is it? Is it Ivy League? Is it、uh, a state school? So, those things will impact what the requirements are for, you know, for science or math or or foreign language. But one of the ways that you can check to see what the requirements are is by typing into a browser the common data set with the name of the school, and you can bring up. What the prior year's students look like with respect to the number of courses they've taken in these different areas. 我认为唯一的例外情况是学生，比如说学文科，然后不太擅长科学课。那么如何，比如说呃，避免学生物？学一些比较简单的科学课，但是对于想奔腾的学生来说，这两门是基础科学。对于其他的同学来说，呃，有一些其他的方式，比如说不学生物或者是不学化学，选一些比较、哦、更容易的一些科学课。I think this is a really good question with respect to students is doing to make Harvard want him or her. The students that Harvard chooses are really not focused necessarily on Harvard being the top of their achievement. They're actually focusing beyond Harvard. They're wanting Harvard to say that this student went to Harvard. They want Harvard to make a big deal about the student. And in order to do that, they're not necessarily focused on Harvard as much as they are focused on whatever interests them. They're doing well in a lot of different realms, not only testing and transcript, but they're showing leadership in student government. They play a sport or two, and they show leadership in those. Perhaps they've started a new program at their school, but they're really interested in achieving, not for college's sake, but because that's really what interests them, and that's really what comes through with Harvard students. That they're not only about achieving. For the sake of going to college, but their sights are set beyond college. 简单一句话 ，Harvard 需要有影响力的学生，所谓的 high impact students.